Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to thank everybody that is supporting us over at Patreon. Uh, we'll have an exclusive up over there later on today. And we see a very interesting handshake from Trump and Kamala there. Oh, I know. You know, it's the same old, same old, and we are here to point it out. Yeah, interesting handshake, interesting earrings, interesting night when you look at uh, the Drudge Report here. It says the night Trump lost it all. The end, and he's surrounded in kitty cats and ducks and, and ducks and kitty cats. <laughs> oh, but why? But why? I don't know. Why There's could that be? Chihuahua back there, too. So. Oh, is there a gremlin? I don't know. Yeah, it's curious. But you could see uh, Harris campaign wants another debate. After the worst performance of his career, his media stock hits record low. Crypto stocks fall on rising bets he'll lose. CNN poll shows 63% of viewers think she won. Wow. I mean, you just go over to CNN again. You can see uh, what they're trying to Mm, put across Chris Wallace says his debate performance was devastating Harris reacts to Trump doubling down on debunked rumors about people eating pets you know this is what we have again that whole thing with debunking they're doing this to get your goat and and it does work they're really trying to get your goat and no I don't mean for a barbecue they <laughs> they're trying to get your goat they're eating the pets Trump shouts about quote unquote they're putting it here fake pet eating story and gets brutally fact checked well people don't trust your own eyes is what they're telling you you know i mean you could see video where you know they're in a driveway here they're in a driveway the, the woman was arrested she was taking bites out of a raw kitty uh, I mean, seriously, and, but don't trust your eyes. Don't trust the, <clears throat> you know, the police uh, video that shows a, a dead kitty right there in the driveway. And, uh, you know, she smiles, she smiles demonically, as you see. She he says, smile, she smiles. And, you know, all the accounts of, of geese going and being taken and others, you know, there's dozens of this. And you'll see account after account, but it's all fake. What do you take from this? What do you take from this? The stories, whether all the media, when we're looking at you know, what we call mainstream, everything from Drudge, which at one point in time seemed to be heavily leaning right, and that was, of course, like 20 years ago. Um, and then, of course, uh, a very much <laughs> leaning to the left now, and tearing apart the right this is this is all about again uh, the system controlling our emotions playing with our emotions getting your goat maybe barbecuing it too uh, or maybe not just as long as they get your goat it, it's certainly certainly a huge mess and you know I heard from one of our family members this morning and she she took a, a look at what was going on and she said, oh my gosh, it is so scripted and having seemed like Kamala had an earpiece in and Trump was just a bumbling idiot. It's like they have to go in front of the mirror and make sure they play their parts good enough. Trump deliberately being a bumbling idiot and her, you know, being very uh, classy with her earpiece in <laughs> and taking information and probably being fed information. They are very smooth these alphabets they are very careful with their with their actors and sometimes the uh, bad actors are bad deliberately and sometimes they're not it's just whatever they want to convey and that's what we have here and this is why we don't bother we don't bother with the whole nonsense of voting why you know it's all scripted they already know what they're going to do our job is is to keep our heads above water in a world where we have to actually pay where we live and live in fear if we don't pay enough where we live and we are trying to break that open we are trying to wake enough people up so that they stop playing the game what happens if a bunch of kids are playing a game and all of a sudden everybody just stops what happens the game goes away and that's what we are trying to do yeah absolutely you know by by voting you're you're saying i i acknowledge the power of this system and its authority 
if you do that, then you have to go along with the rest of it. And, you know, at the same time, what do we need to do? We need to make the system irrelevant. The entirety of the system needs to be irrelevant. What the system is doing is it's trying to emotionally entangle you and pull you into the system. So the key is to, you know, maintain your composure, take a step back and say, you know, these guys are really pathetic actors when you get down to it. Look at the earrings too. You know, they they're you they're, see I I use these new smart earrings to listen to music. Isn't that interesting? She happens to be wearing the exact same ones that there's lots of ads out there uh, about. This is because they want you to to know what's going on. They do want you to that are awake and looking for it for this to get triggered by this and say, look, there, that's the earrings. She was just, you know, saying what they told her to say because she's a bumbling idiot, uh, you know, etc. This is all part of, of that. It, it's all part of getting your goat. And how about this here? Hey, do you recognize that, that face? There she is. That's a young version. This is 1995. I think Kamala is the same age as me. So, you know, she was probably 30 then. Uh, yeah, 61-year-old Willie Brown. She's all around him, all hanging with him. Uh, is she his date? You know, again, uh, slick Willie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you know, of course, they're in these circles because they want... These are the individuals that want, you know, the camera on them. They want to have that microphone in front of them. They want to be the centerpiece. They're, they're all about ego, ego, ego. Oh, you know, we're here to serve the public. No, no, they're here to, to feast off of the blood, sweat, and tears of the public. They're here to be, you know, the, the upper class, the ones that actually sell humanity out for profits and, and vanity. And that's what it is. It's all about vanity. It, it totally is. It's all about the ego which again is is that path that leads to the dark side and uh speaking of that a couple of things uh today is 911 so again we say prayers and positive intentions for all those that lost their lives suddenly in 911 and 911 is a perfect example of how things work uh you know you can't say and and I see too many um people that are uncovering the truth and the reality of of our world and this is where that that flat earther brigade comes in and they get fixated on on the flat earth aspect to the degree where you know maybe things that we should be paying a little bit more attention to like the absolute corruption around us instead of kind of focusing in on that one little contentious point of debate you know the earth is flat the earth is flat uh, you know, you almost want to say, okay, whatever, but look over here. I mean, what's, what is your purpose? Because this is the purpose of the system is to take something like that, fixate on the flat, flat, flat earth phenomenon to the point that we ignore the corrupt politicians. We ignore the people who have their health completely ruined. Uh, we have, we start ignoring even the impending, uh, crash that's coming, economic crash, which they're waiting for the perfect timing to pull, you know, pull that little pillar out. And then it's all going to come tumbling down real quick. And, and again, you know, sure, there's things that don't make sense. And there's a lot of things that are lies and illusions. But this is where I think the system waylays us. It, it gets us thinking, oh, wow, well, magnetic pull reversal. This is just a natural 12,000 year phenomenon. It's just natural. No, it's not natural. There's more technology involved than there is natural component. They're both involved. And this is the thing, too. It's just like, well, you can't believe in evolution or and when you believe in creation. They both exist. There was an intervention, so to speak, and things were created. And species were brought in. And, yeah, you know, again, the human DNA has been tampered with. It's just recently been tampered with. It's being in tampered with as we speak right now yet again it's always being tampered with is really the bottom line and so yet we do have evolution it's just not darwinian evolution because darwin's one of them too and when you look at it the politicians serve the system the media serves the system the the health uh care industry serves the system 
everything serves the system the religions i mean and the, that's the one that many people have a hard time you know they they go and they trust the kings and the queens when it comes to giving you a religious perspective uh, that is to me just that's that's insanity how, how could you possibly as you see her life was all planned you know from the get-go she's been in these circles from the get-go and when we look deeper we find you know again that not only are all the royals interconnected same bloodlines it's the same thing with the current politicians when you look at them who's in the highest positions you know the presidency prime ministers uh you know again all this this is all one big club it is they're, they're all tied into the secret societies they're all tied in uh to the masons etc cetera, etc cetera. it's one big club and it's it's not one that we're invited to and you wouldn't want to go if you were invited because, you know, that is truly in some ways selling your soul. Um, you know, as far as the information that comes out of Flat Earth, it's, it's you know, what can you do about it, really? I mean, I, I like to focus on things that we might be able to do something about. So even if you're throwing that information out and you're really yelling at people about this or that, yes, we, we see the lie. We see the lie. There's a distortion. There's information that's not helping us. But what can we do? Where can we step? Where can we put our energy? Where it's, it's going to help? Where it's going to make a change? Where it's going to make all of our lives better? Because they really are feeding off of our blood, sweat, tears, and literally fear. So where can we work with each other, give each other grace? Um, you know, even if we disagree in certain points, and we will, I think the focus should be on where can we agree? Where can we agree? Because that's what these people do. I mean, they have, it's a game for them. You saw that handshake with uh, Trump and Kamala. They're, they're probably having drinks afterwards and, and they're having a good time. There is no angst between them, even though they both live different lives and they both probably have different opinions on things. They have that one commonality that they want to control. And I think we need to have our commonality that we want our freedom. And if we could focus on that, I think we'd get somewhere. So here what we see is uh, a gang that took over a hotel in, in, uh, in El Paso County, Texas, uh, Trend de Aragua. Again, the same uh, Venezuelan gang that we were talking about up in uh, Colorado. So, you know, this is part of what we've always thought they're going to do. They're going to utilize uh, the cartels and, and all the type of people that gravitate um, into these um, dark, dark, sinister uh, gangs to cause chaos within the U.S. Um, at the time building up to uh, the WW3 that they're still looking to um, start at some point in time. But, you know, again, we can affect all this. We absolutely can. And it, this is the point. They want you arguing about something that is not really going to uh, be a life and death situation like flat earth but there are life and death situations like all the geoengineering that's going on uh, all across the planet so you know while saying you know the earth is flat you know don't worry we're not all falling off the edge that's not a threat to your life uh, but hurricanes can be floods can be <laughs> certainly earthquakes and volcanoes all these things can be here we're looking at hurricane francine which you know was skirting the coast and uh, typically you know this this got caught and is coming in to have a new orleans uh impact again new orleans you know one of the places that's been the most impacted by devastating hurricanes throughout history um, thankfully it looks like it's going to be a category one or a category two uh, the last time I heard the winds were around 90 miles an hour, but they were expecting them to strengthen to 100. So, you know, it could be a category two. The wind shear is supposed to take hold and then cut that down right on landfall, which is, is going to be in this area here, you know, more than likely, uh, you know, not a direct hit on Lake Charles or, you know, over towards the, the western edge there. But it will deliver eastern winds most likely to, uh, you know, northeasterly part of the hurricane is where you have the most 
uh, devastation from the winds and this will be right over that uh, New Orleans area uh, now, I haven't seen anything. It's moving at 10 miles per hour, uh, basically. I haven't seen anything where it's going to stall out. Um, let's hope something like that doesn't happen, because that could be some of the worst scenarios. And you see it goes up the Mississippi River Valley. By the way, um, this area to me is so fascinating with the history, with the mounds, with the giants, with the encounters uh, that you know the Europeans had and what they encountered uh, really all across the southeast. It's very, very um, interesting. I've been deep diving down that. Um, in some books and found other books that are still in print that were printed uh, originally more in the 1850s, 1860s. Uh, if you want to get your hands on some nuggets uh, that may be very worthwhile, and Cindy said this too, you know, find stuff that was printed farther back if you could still find it. Um, I found revisions in some of the newer books that I've had previously that I had let go of and then reordered and I find they're missing huge chunks of information that was primarily why I was looking for them in the first place because there's always this editing of our history they're always revising and editing our history and as we learn more things that tell us completely that not only is the science flawed the history is totally rewritten um, they're, they're always wiping out as much as they can through acts of quote unquote nature and, and God. <laughs> yeah. Again, that, that very term, you know, somebody had said, uh, why do you guys say source bless? That sounds so lame. It's like, well, because we're being very, very specific. Cause if you use the term God, you could be talking about thousands of different entities. <laughs> you know, Source bless, source bless. Yes, it's it's us, it's us because we do understand the source of all things. Whereas the word God has been so manipulated, it's hard for me to say God because then you have more people, like a hundred people, say, "Well, which God?" And because that's what we do, we see the word "Oh, God" in the Bible. It's like which alien God do you refer to? But if we say source, that is the source of all things. It's very specific, and it is us. You know, and it's even in the uh, Old Testament. It literally says alien god in yeah. in the actual transition uh, uh, translations. It's literally, don't worship any other, any other alien gods. Now, I mean, you can't be any more specific than that, mm -hmm. in, in in telling what the real reality is. Right, and and for me, having the experience that I had um, with being in front of the source, the source of all things, it was very profound. So it, for me, it's like, a, I mean this for me because of my experience and I don't want to say anybody's good or bad or different, but for, for me to say God is very wobbly for me. And, and I just feel like I'm taking a step down. That's me. Everybody has their own thing. If God works for you and it works for your soul and your heart and you're really solid with the word God, then, then use the word God. I think that's where we need to extend the grace to other people. It's like you do you because that's the most important. Everybody else is taken. We're in a world that we're being lied to. And if we can pinpoint and focus our attention to who's saying the lies and who is using um you know who the man is behind the curtain who is creating our angst on this world who is creating the fake skies who is creating uh the false floods maybe if we all directed our energy toward that and and not on each other's issues <laughs> we would guess somewhere that's what i'm trying to say and and i and i i can see that we would get somewhere focusing on what we agree on and if somebody doesn't agree with you letting letting that go it, is is it harming you is it hurting you in some way is it affecting your life we all need to be ourselves and we're all very individual and just like source created us all as individual facets of a diamond we all reflect a different way we also we all have flaws and if you look at diamonds or worked with diamonds as far as i could remember 
the most important thing on a diamond is the flaw. The flaw is critical because that's how you know that that diamond is very unique. So that takes our flaws and it raises them up to be the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and now I want to jump out of the sequence here because uh, I just want to give you again uh, we, what we were just talking about. Listen to the words of BlackRock CEO Larry Fink. You now make a point of that's a, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. And this is what they do to society. That says it all. They're forcing behaviors. You have to force behaviors. At BlackRock, they are forcing behaviors. Um, you know, that is such a key admission about, again, a corporation, which the root word is corpse. It's a dead, soulless entity. Um, really, if you want to really dissolve the power structure of the world, eliminate corporations. They that That one move will make it impossible for them to keep pushing their agendas they would have to go right back to outright um, monarchies, you know, things like that. And people won't hand, it, we won't have that now. It, we're just not going to go along with that. This is an illusion. The corporation, I mean, it still is ultimately, it's a dictatorship with a, a group uh, that hides in the shadows, in these corporate shadows, uh, that really rules the roost. And here, you have to force behaviors. It's like when you go again, if you've ever done any type of call center work, you know, people are given a script. You're, you're not supposed to be, you know, Joe, Jane, John, Susan. No, you're supposed to be uh, a, a, an employee of BlackRock or whatever the dead entity is. You don't inflict your own personality. You don't go off script you go by the script you go by the scripture and what what cindy was talking about with you know uh again you find your own way but you, you do you really think your own way is, is to take on uh the same belief structure that a billion or more people have taken on because they were born into it or they were indoctrinated into it or they were forced into it they were conquered and subjected uh, to the wills of these colonial powers, which again, the colonial powers were corporate entities at that time. When you look at it, there's no difference. This is economic slavery, and they are forcing behavior. This is what they're doing now. They're going to pull the, the rug out economically. And meanwhile, you have protests and small riots forming. This was in D.C. Um, as you see, fires being lit, high-end stores broken into um organized it was organized group of people uh that came together to loot stores inclu including gucci and tiffany and you know uh, there's nothing in there uh that we would ever look at or think to to look at uh, again they control people through ego ego and ego is really uh, the exact opposite of of what you want to build up when you're when you're looking into the spiritual side of things traditionally it's really about overcoming our ego so we can see the bigger picture the the oneness of everything so we can start to truly have compassion in our hearts for others and you know again that that whole communist uh, capitalist thing is is just another construct uh, when you look at Karl Marx you know again he's related to the Rothschilds of course and so does so was Adolf Hitler the they're all related so when you see oh ba Adolf Hitler went and shut down a Rothschild bank that's all part of the script that's all part of the script in order to to catch the people that are waking up and then divide them up still more by getting them to go down another one of their rabbit holes. It's all about rabbit holes. Follow me down the rabbit hole and you'll get lost forever. You'll get caught up in minutia and you'll, you'll miss the bigger purpose. 
Unfortunately, the forced behavior is nothing new. This has been going on for generation after generation after generation. And this is exactly what gets people out of alignment. And it, it's what gets people doing things that naturally they wouldn't do. So when you are going through an awakening and when you are ha getting into alignment, you suddenly find yourself doing things that are completely intolerable you absolutely cannot cope with them and it really can be like giving a cat a bath it is not an easy thing to do to go through alignment and find your purpose and live your truth because of the generation of generations of forced behavior but there is ways to do it there are ways to find your purpose and get on your path and get some help doing that. So um, this is nothing new. It's just they're becoming a little more boisterous about it because they know it's going to upset people. Absolutely. Uh, here you have a crash <laughs> Tokyo bound flight hit, hit the back of a flight that was going to Louisiana as they were taxing for takeoff. You know, um, there's not a lot of healthy, clear minded pilots out there. What could possibly have, have happened to all the pilots out there? Uh, we've seen so much of that. Meanwhile, uh, you have the entire city of Wrightwood, California, under evacuations as you have the bridge fire burning. In fact, you know, again, here we are, you know, this is like the heart of fire season. And same thing as always, you know, there's a lot of lights from the sky that come down. There's a lot of um, melted things that, again, people like John uh, Levy has been showing on videos, uh, structures that really seem to resemble buildings, except for the fact that they look almost more like melted stone. What could burn so hot that could do that? And, and what has done that in the past? Well, it's the same thing that, that is happening now. Uh, we're just in an uh, earlier phase still of this um, you know great redo here and yeah there's all over uh, southern california you can see the fires are are burning and uh, this is that bridge fire as you see 34,000 acres you know we we're all very very aware uh think again to maui and think about how how again you know there's just so many of these things happening all the time you know that maui is like gosh it's 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 almost like a blurry afterthought rui doso you know several of our family members uh lived in the little town of rui doso and you know half that town went went down uh it's just shocking absolutely we're just so used to this and this is ontario california there's of course wildfires going on up in canada and the interesting part is that now more than ever we see you know started by what <laughs> no not climate change arson arson you know and and it's been the case the whole time it's just now we're getting to that point where uh, you know things things can't really be covered but you know here you go climate impacts uh yeah they're they're they they sit they stick these in you know they stick these in as much as as possible uh because they're talking about it it's really all due to to cow farts yeah sure sure and this tractor trailer exploded you know out of the blue because of cow farts uh this over here in georgia green county georgia uh, one person did lose their their life. I don't know what was in the back of the trailer. I didn't see um, anybody say anything about it. But you know, again, be careful out there. There's bridges dropping in Germany and in other places as well. You know, why did this bridge just collapse? There's been a bunch of these. You can't keep up with everything that's going on. And then just the admission, they still have the Wikipedia out there for the whole contrail, uh, chemtrail, quote-unquote, myth, even though Indonesia is conducting weather modification to prevent rain during National Sports Week. you got China talking about weather modification for years. The U.S. military will control the weather by 2025. Oh, but it, it's all just, it's like debunking the cats getting eaten. It, it's you know what are you trying to say are you trying to prove how how stupid that you think humanity is by you know all this admissions right in front of our face we could read we're not that stupid yet no i mean it's it's really 
ob obvious and they're going to make it more and more obvious because that's part of the plan it's part of the plan to put things out there so it's so extremely undeniable and then they're they're going to do whatever they're going to do after the undeniability of of everything is out there and it's to cause a big clash Meanwhile, you have an anthrax outbreak in Wyoming, claims the lives of 50 to 60 heads of cattle and moose. When it comes to uh, livestock, they, it doesn't seem like they want any livestock alive. <laughs> because, again, controlling the food, they want everybody to eat their Soylent Green, and that's it. And be happy you get your Soylent Green. As Larry Fink says, you got to sometimes force people into certain behaviors. This, this is, again, the, the controlling uh, group. These are the Gigi. These are the Gigi that control this planet. And the downside of a cashless society here in China after the typhoon, which caused so much havoc, uh, water, electricity cut off, mobile phones are dead. Nobody could do anything. Don't worry. You know, your Bitcoin's secured. Uh, you know, again, there's more and more people that are exposing Bitcoin for what it is. I understand, you know, if you are the brave soul uh, that wants to take advantage of something like that to try to make money quick, because you can, uh, that's not me. You know, I'm very conservative by nature um, in some ways. <laughs> And, you know, that's definitely not me. At some point, you know, they will pull the plug. And again, it's digital. So obviously, yeah, I, I do not believe that we can control a portion of the Internet, a portion of the Internet, you know, meaning the, the, that there's going to be a, a free side of the Internet uh, and then the controller side. Look up. You know, look at Starlink. You know, Elon is one of them. And Kristoff, the Polish psychic uh, who has helped authorities find missing people. You know, I think he really is a good guy. And I think he uh, really is trying to help. Um, and he's talking about Warren Buffett here. He is saying that Warren Buffett, you know, again, who's Warren Buffett? Obviously, somebody with much more money than pretty much everybody in the world, besides a few people like Elon and Bezos. What's he doing? Be well, economically, to safeguard his money, he's buying commodities. Commodities. And he's not even buying necessarily a lot of glittery things as as Christoph says he's not buying necessarily a lot of gold or silver even he's buying actual tangible things uh, you know commodities again you could look at it in terms of, of lumber and everything you would need for building and anything you would need for energy um, and this is because we are probably within uh, I would say it's a pretty safe bet that were within a year of the crash and in fact the crash could very well happen the last part of 24 or sometime you know into 25 so his hedge that he is doing is he's actually buying tangible things tangible things for when this next period comes the dollar is going to be devalued he says by the u.s purposely because they already have the new monetary system in place and that new, new monetary system is going to be tied to a lot of a lot of things, you know, that you're going to have to really make a big decision about. Do you want to really take part of them? And there it, it could be that the next phase that they give us is not the final phase. In fact, I don't think it would be the final phase. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking that, well, does the next phase, obviously it's going to have more restringent um things around it constructs around it uh all about control is it something we could still be partly in one foot in one foot out i hope so you know i really really do hope so i can't see how it, it i don't think they're going to be able to um completely implement what they'd love to implement because people i don't think will stand up for it uh, at this point in time but th after that again the agenda is for 2030 so there's it's a transition uh, so he sees the dollar purposely devalued by the US and then a new uh, a new currency being implemented that they already have in reserve could be a digital dollar that would make a lot of sense um, 
and then at some point in time there'll be a, a, a global one uh, whatever they want to call it um, system that will also be digital because digital is is them they control the internet you know the internet was made by the military and it's still used by the military militaries are used to police all of humanity it's the division of humanity into these apparently warring little tribes that keeps this illusion going uh, he does also talk about the illness that's coming that he sees manifesting out in the open in this period there already are cases of this illness um, that is is building and we know personally of somebody um, that didn't do a certain thing uh, that's young and healthy prime of life very you know strong healthy looking uh, man yeah I would say young man because I'm old um, but he was you know that the doctors were talking putting on on ventilator and uh, obviously um, his mom is uh, one of our uh, most beloved people in our family and uh, so you know she'll she'll give him a strong ear to that and and you know definitely not go that route but um, it was interesting because when she reached out to him uh, out to us about him we sent um, his photo out to some of our you know you you could call them prayer warriors but we're, we're non-dogmatic um, or you could call it, you know, healers or, or just, you know, putting intention to use and he's improving. Um, so, uh, Cindy, this is what m my beautiful, wonderful li uh, life, she is my life and my wife, um, does. You know, she gets on the horn and, and she gets uh, her powerful healer, healing team together. And, uh, yeah, just like, you know, right away yesterday he started to improve. Um, so, you know, again, the power of intent and especially our intent together uh, is just insanely powerful. And this is why they divide us. It is. It, it is because they know that our energy together can really work miracles. And, you know, any of you that feel called to please send good intentions out to um, our 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 friend which we, we don't really know him but we do know his mother very very well you share the first name? um nate for nate so send good intentions out for nate that he uh gets better because he, he's really 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 gone through something very strange and the oddity about it is, and you know is that he should not have gotten this ill it just should not have happened but it did so we're we're really keeping an eye on him and you know we're uh, working with his mom we're working very close and this is what we do on our downtime if there if you can call it downtime you know we work with other people who are having a, a really hard time and this is what we do in between so th this is our life it, it's it's just trying to help people through the hardest times of their life and a lot of other people and you guys that do regular sessions and your Patreons, you guys are helping us do that. You are helping us make a difference. Know that you are part of that big wave. Know that you're part of that pebble in the pond. You are helping and we appreciate it. And a lot of other people appreciate it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this is this is why um, all the information for making appointments are on every single video. You just have to open and you know where it says see more inf info open it up and it gives you everything we we do it by what we call a suggested donation basis um because you know we we have people um for instance that have been uh destroyed financially by the medical system so you know there are people that we've worked with that um really you know can't afford so so then we we adjust you know it's a sliding scale type thing depending on what people can do um but if people could afford you know then there's the suggested donations and then there are those that uh, go above and beyond and you know again they're they're paying it forward so you know this is what we do um you know our life is a meditative practice uh as we we every single day we're, we're in meditation um doing our meditations our mantras our qigong which again means energy work in chinese uh, our yoga again which yoga is union it means union with the divine it means union with source you know again 
God is not uh, a term that is maybe definitive enough. When you see this, now this little man, you might say, oh my God, what's this little guy doing? You're putting him to work that young? You know, well, yeah, you know, it's the difference between going to factories and, and factories having, you know, 8 and 10 year olds, 12 year olds working 12 to 14 hours than this little young man helping out dad as dad shows him a very useful skill and how you do things. No, this, this in my opinion, is, is perfectly fine. In fact, this is a blessing. Here he's, he's showing this young man how to actually do something that's going to be constructive in your entire life. This is a skill. When, when you know, I've, I've been into martial arts since I was a, a young kid, and when I see some of these kids that grow up at like three and four, they're already teaching them skills. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't underestimate the impact that has on somebody's life and, and learning this trade. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with masonry. And there's nothing wrong with being free. Uh, but, of course, becoming part of a certain club, you know, that's, that's different. And, of course, you know, slave labor, forced labor is very different than a young man learning skills and helping out daddy. Mm. I, I love this because, you know, when he grows up, he's going to be able to make his own sidewalk. He'll be able to make his own floor. He'll be able to make his own own everything. And he's not going to have to hire anyone. In fact, he can be the one who goes out and does these jobs. And I mean, it looks fun. I'm looking at that little kid play with stuff. And it's like he's having a good time. And he's learning. And he's learning skills. And I think that's what we need to do with our children is like, you know, bring them to work with us, teach them things, um, let them be with us. You know, uh, one thing good about homeschooling is you get to spend so much more time with your children, so much more time. I, I think uh, it was around at least 40% more time if you're a homeschooling parent that you get to be with your kids and, you know, then the government's not getting a hold of them and then telling them these things that they're just going to make changes about, you know, in, in a year or two and say, oh, we're sorry, we were wrong about that. Or, you know, the, the government's not going to have their hands on them to create forced behavior. And, and, you know, if you're their parent, you can watch and see what is your kid interested in. And maybe they think that thing is fun when in reality... It is fun, plus you're learning a skill, plus you're being with your child, and your child is learning something valuable that they can take with them for the rest of their life. Absolutely. So I remember when our first local McDonald's opened up. Um, that's how old I am. You know, is, is McDonald's was a big thing, and we went to it, and my memories are that it was damn good. I mean, really good, you know, like regular, normal food, not like it is now. And you see here, you know, back in the day, just hand cut russet potatoes, beef tallow and salt. Now you got GMO soybean oil, natural beef flavor, <laughs> wheat and milk derivatives, dextrose, sugar, uh, sodium acid pyrophosphate, used to preserve color and prevent graying and salt. And, you know, it's just not the same. No, because why do they do things and make things more complicated when something in the past worked just fine? They'll say, well, it's, it's, it's you know, again, to make a better version, something's going to last longer, be safer. It couldn't be any farther from the truth. Could not be any farther from the truth. This is David Icke. How the electromagnetic cloud is being created by SpaceX and other low orbit satellites as China has said that they're going to put up as many uh, satellites as, as SpaceX. And so, you know, what they're really doing, they're all on the same team, is they are trying to block ascension. Uh, ultimately, they're trying to block uh, what the real creator uh, has in plan. And yes, uh, we do believe there is a creator of this universe. That creator is a beautiful, benevolent being um, that is, is beyond description, uh, the amount of love. Absolutely. You know, 6 and 7G are on the way here. They want to lock down the entire planet. They are trying to lock us down from uh, the, the rest of uh, the civilized galactic society which is out there because there is 
And this is, again, when you get people thinking, you can't penetrate uh, the dome, it's it's like a cell membrane. Of course you can penetrate the dome. And pe people come and go all the time. This is why they are putting this up there. They are trying to totally seal us in. And, and there has been a, a, a consciousness grid that's been in place to lower the consciousness of humanity. But again, the, the Creator is uh, freeing those humans that want to be free. And you know, the sun which has been hidden from us by whether we want to call it a Dyson sphere or a, a sun simulator, a solar simulator. Uh, we've seen that honeycomb pattern that's in front of the sun. Yeah, the, with this takeover that happened, it, it's huge. And these are very, very advanced beings that took over our section of this world. And they have been keeping the natural from us, and they've been giving us the artificial. You can communicate with extraterrestrials, anybody could, because they use telepathy. And our brains have magnetic material that can communicate telepathically with other humans and animals. Trust the vibes. You know, this is where, uh, you know, people just don't get it. And, and they'll say... Well, yeah, we were talking about um, biblical debate, and yet they're they're talking about uh, Elohist and Yahwist, not understanding that all that really uh, is. If you look back farther, you'll see actual names instead of just consistently uh, El or Yah or Elohim. No, you'll see Anu and Enki and Enlil and Marduk and Ningashida, and you'll see you know, many different names mentioned in the, the thousands of years older myths uh, that, again, are exposing a little bit more than the system wants to expose. But they, they, they know we're going to find all these things out. So this is why, again, they're, they're trying to get you used to the return of the Greek gods, to get you used to the return of the Anunnaki, and they play good cop, bad cop. Well, you know, Enki really loves you. It's that Enlil that's this, you know, he's the little butthead. The reality is we can communicate telepathically. And, and this is how we communicate when we're out of body, when we no longer have a voice box. And, and we don't actually uh, have any ability to make the vibrations in a physical sense. We send... We send messages through, and Cindy can explain it way better than me. This this is our reality. This is what we normally do. So when you contact extra, extraterrestrials, there's not going to be any figuring out their language. They're going to talk directly to you, and you will understand. Um, the difference between having a physical form here in the 3D and uh, being on another density... And as far as how you hear and how you communicate, um, you your senses change. Everything changes. So when it comes to what I will call hearing, because that's what we call it here in the 3D, you hear with your whole body when you're not on this density, when your body is in another density. So everything is centralized. You hear everything from within. And everything still takes on a, a tone but it, it's not external and you hear and feel everything. And that's probably um, the best way I, I can explain it or I can think of explaining it right now. Uh, light and, um, and sound create form. So we have that form and here we're in the 3D. And we're able to take this form and, and uh, you open your mouth, your sound box, it goes out there. So this is where um, mantras come in so handy because you are vibrating your voice box. You're working your throat chakra, uh, the vagus nerve, which is something that, you know, so important to the body. So many organs are very important to the body. And when we are exercising those organs and keeping those organs in good shape, then our body functions better. So mant mantras have a very strong scientific backing, as does meditation, quieting the mind, understanding who you are and who you are not is what meditation is about. And these are just some things that we do on a daily basis to keep ourselves where we're at, you know, including eating really good food and eating as healthy as possible. We do a lot of things to keep ourselves in tip-top shape and, and, and help other people know how to do that too at least give them a path something different than what the mainstream is is telling people to do so um 
I hope that came across okay. Absolutely. This little guy is getting ready for winter. We should all be prepared for what's coming. Uh, this can be a challenging one um, for sure. But it, again, it's if we're ready for it, we know what's coming, we see the season and the signs, then we just prepare as best as possible. And I do think, again, uh, that does involve spiritual practice. I, I, there's nothing more important. And that doesn't equate to necessarily a religious practice. Mind, body, breath practice is the most powerful practice you can do. And this little guy, he's probably got his nuts all in line, and he's just having a ball. <laughs> he's, having a, he's having a good time. Yes, he is. Absolutely. You know, the one soul, the one consciousness uh that inhabits him inhabits all of us we are one one consciousness we are an ocean of which you could take an individual cup and you could throw it in the air and and make thousands of little droplets that come down it's still one collective and that's the reality of our consciousness uh, we are all playing different roles in this grand journey we're all here to help each other if you need to reach us again uh, to make an appointment, spiritual coaching, Vedic astrology, charts, energy work, balancing the chakras, getting rid of attachments, all these things, uh, again, you can reach us at evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com and allow a couple weeks uh, to, get it, to get it scheduled. It's on every single video. Just hit the little uh, drop down for more info. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.